I just remember feeling dirt and like the wheel kind of jerking on me and I like bolted my eyes open and I was off the freeway. <laughs> Gotta make an intro for us at some point. Um, yeah, and it, I just realized that actually when we're setting up, like, we don't have an intro. Yep. yep. Did we choose a song though? Yeah, I chose a song for the like our um, clips. Yeah, for the outro to clips. Um, I'm not even sure if I mean technically this isn't a logo behind us here. This is just typed out in our a live studio font, like our brand font, mm-hmm. um, our brand color. Um, but yeah, so maybe I can go live on a live studio and make and those things. Make that. That'd be cool. Yep. That'd be cool. About to start live streaming everything I do because I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start vlogging? I just, it's the putting them together part that really sucks. Yeah. It's, it's, if it wasn't so hands-on putting together vlogs, I'd be down for it. Yeah. But, like, I've been, you know, holding off, not holding off, but I've been, like, kind of, like, almost done with this three-camera setup thing just because, like, I'm just in my head when I'm in there. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we film live, like... That's it. Do you get me? Like, we're, we're getting what we got. Um, but, uh, yeah. Welcome to another episode of This Wasn't Planned. My name is Chris. You can find me <laughs> at a Copy and Steal down here. Um, let me introduce yourself. No, no, no name. No. My name's Priscilla. <laughs> Curl up underscore. Don't look over there. That's not even over there. I know, but it's hard when you have like the switcher in your hand. Like you're like, are you gonna introduce yourself? But then I just know it's still triggering your lower thirds. I'm just like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I yeah. Get you. Oh man, what to talk about? What to talk about? All right. Your mood is a little down. Yeah. Yep. Clients are, uh, fuck, man. It's just, uh, it's wild out here, bro. <laughs> it's wild out here. Just try to give value, and, uh, it's just, uh, don't even want to get into specifics about that. But, um, going through the fields and, uh, trying to figure out how we're going to make this work. How we're going to. Mm-hmm. Bring this child into a steady life. Um, but it doesn't seem like anything's going to be steady in the near future. <laughs> I get you. You know, running your own business is... Nothing's, in, nothing's for sure like a 9 to 5 would be. You know, mm. 9 to 5, you know when to clock in, where to clock in, what your tasks are for today... I mean, this is an overgeneralization because, you know, there's definitely (laughs) jobs where it changes day to day. But, you know, if you're thinking about your typical nine to five, um, you get a deposit or a check every week, every two weeks. Yeah. Um, And for us, we have to make sure that our checks come. And it's That's completely honest. We're us. not even like at the point where like we're paying ourselves checks. You get me? Like we're just out here. I know. Figuratively though. Yeah, no, nah, I get you. <laughs> but it just sucks because it's like in the same vein where you can say like, yeah, it's safe. But then another fucking pandemic happens and everyone gets laid off. You get me? Yeah. So is there really anything that's safe? No. I mean, both you and I had nine to fives. Mm-hmm. Before the pandemic, or like, yeah, up until everything got shut down, pretty much. I mean, you still had a job. I was let go. Yeah. It's wild out here. Yeah, I actually did want to talk about that though. What? You know, 
this wasn't planned isn't just because we have a child on the way that wasn't planned per se. Yeah. Like, you know, the term this wasn't planned also applies to, you know, just life. Yeah. You know, uh, just, I mean, <laughs> I honestly wasn't even, like, technically planned my birth, you know. <laughs> Jesus. No, my parents, well, my parents Shots were trying. fired, Karen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was not here for that. So that was but is lethal. that, that? but just we've kidding, said that it. it's not a bad thing, you <laughs> know. Not. Because my parents, yes, they were trying, and they actually gave up. They're like, you know what, maybe it's not meant to be. And then I happened to come along um, yeah. when they're just a little older than what they were planning. Yeah. But um, not that old, though. They're, what, 33? Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I'm 30 right now. But, um, you know, um, like my mama says, shit happens. Life happens. Yep. And, you know, as much as we would like to control how things happen, like, it's mostly out of your control. And what is in your control, that's up to you how you deal with that. Yep. Um, but, you know, life, like, this wasn't planned also applies to how, you know, we kind of cross paths, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Definitely, you know. The the pandemic just took me by a a whirlwind. I wasn't planning to get stuck out here. I came out to San Diego to like, you know, really just put a spin on my life and just like, you know, chase that California dream. I've always wanted to be out here. Um, but I think it kind of got a little like when uh, <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you actually want to go into that just a little bit on why you even came out to California? Because technically, if you want to even go before 2020, like a lot of things I feel like dominoed for you to be like, you know what? Like, I don't like I have a dream and things are i guess i don't know i don't want to put words in your mouth but like you just started making some decisions that weren't i would say 100 percent planned out but you knew you were going to do it right yeah yeah like i was you know i think what uh not like middle of 2019 i had like just gotten out of a relationship and i uh pivoted a flight to San Diego because I always wanted to visit one of my best friends out here, Alex. Shout outs to Alex. Um, and he lives in Paradise, which I say Paradise is Ocean Beach. Um, I'm sure the OB nation, OB natives would be very happy to say to hear me say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that drive down Narragansett was just like, fuck. This was everything I mm-hmm. imagined California to be. So I came out here before for like interviews and things. And like I told you, I went to Hollywood and I was disgusted with I mean, Hollywood. <laughs> that's, yeah. When you told me, you're like, yeah, I've been to California before, but it was like Hollywood. I'm like, ooh, that's a yeah. bad starting <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hollywood was uh, something else. It was, I don't know why I thought it was going to be a, like Fresh Prince of Bel Air type vibes, but. Like the movies. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, I mean, the movies aren't really even based in Hollywood. They're yeah. just, it's just, I don't know. I think that's where, like, s- the studios started, and that's why, and then the stars, and then it became a tourist hotspot, and yeah. just everyone avoids Hollywood. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I just... Uh... I made the decision, well, I mean, the decision was always to move out to the West Coast, but my goal was to just visit places until I found a spot, until I felt like, hey, you know, I was was home, and I just, I remember coming out here, and like, you know, I wasn't in the best headspace, because I was just fresh off of a breakup, and like, 
you know, even even in that headspace, I, uh, you know, the people that I met out here seem to be genuine and seem yeah. to be, you know, they were aware that I was in my head, but they were also aware of just like, hey, like, welcome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, next time you're around, I want to see you. And, you know, shout out to like, you know max and his original ex-girlfriend um you know <laughs> his original original i don't know what the fuck i'm saying <laughs> anyway um max and skylar like they they made me feel you know happy to be here hannah like a lot of alex's crews and friends mm-hmm. um and yeah i just saw a different way of life out here like obi is definitely like a, its own little vacuum <laughs> there um and I got to see downtown before downtown was a desolate wasteland and, you know, thing. So, like, and I, then I, I came out for, like, a second trip, loved it even more. Um, and then I, I said, hey, third time I come out, like, I'm going to search for a spot. And it just happened to be in the beginning of March. You know what I mean? I took off from work. Um, I think I, I was doing, like, a couple of things from, like, cafes. But, like, I was mainly just out here fucking searching for an apartment and like i had like a, a, a wondering i had like a little like inkling that something was going down but like it felt like the west coast was like a little more caught up than the east coast yeah um and, and things were like you know bubbling to the surface a lot faster and i would be on the phone with my mom and be like hey, i don't know what's going on and she'd be like neither do i like and then while i was over here after i signed my lease the day after it got declared a pandemic mm-hmm. and i remember i think like i i think my building i don't know if they gave me the option to like back out of it um but i remember my mom telling me like hey like now if you need to back out like do so um but i knew that if i left i wasn't ever going to come back i was going to stay in new york for the rest of my life and while i love new york i just uh i was so done with it like i remember like mm-hmm. you know i would i I think I told one of my uh, old coworkers like my the the day I realized like I really need to move like besides the time when I got almost robbed by a homeless man, um, <laughs> freaking uh, I was just coming out of the Metro North and just headed to work and I just I stopped in my tracks and the people behind me were pissed and I just started walking back to my cart against everyone who was trying to walk uh you know into grand central and i just couldn't do it anymore i just went back home and i took the day off and i I was just tired of being in that school of fish tired of you know i don't know and i never really found like a a space where like i felt like i truly belonged in new york and i I don't know it's a mix of a lot of things like growing up you know me um and out here it just the weather is beautiful. The weather is exactly what I always want in terms of like fall and spring all year round. <laughs> um, and there was just opportunity out here, opportunity to do something and like, you know, build. I've always wanted to build a business. I've always wanted to be a good boss um, and, you know, build a space that people love to come to work to. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of kind of what pushed me out here like i wanted to you know feel that i wanted to feel me expanding my horizons and you know growing Mm -hmm. um you know i just uh i'm happy i did it because you know i I am happy that i'm able to pursue something that I, i love um it ain't easy at all I miss those nice paychecks from my UX career. But um, I just don't miss working on something. And, like, I don't know, I often felt like the j- things I was building was, like, it was I was building people's day jobs, you get me? And, like, that's cool. Like, if you get to, like, think about it creatively and make things easy and fun for them. But, like, just tech doesn't work like that. Like, there's a lot of just, like, fucking politics and people trying to climb their own economic ladder especially in the startup space like it's it can be toxic as fuck um and i know all offices have their their toxic 
traits yeah. and things like that. But. I think when money is involved and numbers anywhere can, you know, become toxic. Yeah. 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 So that's basically, you know, just, I guess, you becoming more self-aware of what was happening to you in life and just just becoming aware that it just wasn't working. It wasn't working for you anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you took opportunities that, you know, came to you and... Or not came to you, but just opportunities that I, I, popped up, right? Yeah, like no, I I, per, I pursued it, and you get me like I, I really went for it. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I guess you know the the opportunity was really the you know me going through my breakup and just like not, you know, feeling like I wanted to go to a wedding after you know, breaking up with someone, and uh, you know coming out to visit a friend. And, you know, to, and, and, and more so than that, like the, the friend I chose to visit was someone that I truly felt the, a genuine connection with. You know I me? Mean? Like, yeah. Someone who, who knows me and like, we've worked together creatively and, you know, I just, uh, I saw that he was out here building a community and as long as I've tried and, you know lived in new york like I, i've never really been able to do that you know i mean like some, a lot of people say and i always say this like i forget who originally told me but like new york can sometimes be a place where like everyone is alone together mm-hmm. you get me and it's just you get so desensitized to how many people are around you that it becomes a a dog eat dog world you know what I mean? someone drops a dollar you step on it and like <laughs> Um, I could a, say we're like that out here with our freeways. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, and you know, there's there's two sides to to every coin. You get me? Like the I, I would definitely say the other thing is true. Like the other day, what was that quote that uh, someone said? Where it's just like on the East Coast, like especially in New York, like someone will help you and insult you at the same time, but still help you. You get me? Whereas on the West Coast, someone will drive by and say, damn, I'm so sorry. They'll send you the best of wishes, but they'll go their merry way. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, I, if I've say that I've seen that 100% out here. Yeah. Um, but it's easy to just drive by fucking Tent Alley. You get me? It's easy to just like do these things. I will say it's also easy to walk by homeless in new york just because of how fucking you me like i said Mm -hmm. when i came out here like there wasn't like there was more or less homeless people than it was in new york it was just like in new york like there's so many other people that it's hard to really notice the the homeless at times i mean obviously you notice them in the middle of the night and like you know fresh in the morning but um everybody including the homeless is just minding what just thinking about what they got to do for the day yeah and going about their day yeah, you get me? And it's literally that school of fish mentality. Like, they will part the sea just mm-hmm. to walk out of there. Like, uh, fucking people will abandon a, a fucking train cart if someone smells like shit. And then they'll, like, it'll be one of those things where, like, as they're walking out of that cart into the next cart next to they won't tell the person walking into their cart that they're like, oh, don't go into this one. It smells like shit. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just shit like that or the ac doesn't work in this one um i don't know i'm, I'm a big uh common courtesy person and i've always just been that way so you would be the person to be like hey don't go in that cart yeah you get me um i was always holding doors open for people and just you know not not would you say i mean i would you've said that it's come from your mom mm-hmm and would you also say, in part, it's because that just, you noticed people didn't do that? Yeah, I noticed people didn't do that. Um, part of it, yeah, it was definitely 
from my mom and just like making sure that you know I wasn't being a an asshole to anyone I remember like going to school was when it really like clicked for me where like uh, I went to college in the middle of nowhere Pennsylvania and like felt like I was abroad but like people could sense the difference from me in terms of like I wasn't doing all that shit I wasn't holding doors open I wasn't you know what I mean I was just a New Yorker in the middle of fucking Pennsylvania um and I remember like I had a counselor that would like kind of like help me like acclimate to the school Mm -hmm. and like he told me that people noticed it people noticed that I just you know I wasn't doing those things he's like are you good here are you happy and I was like yeah I'm happy like I got friends like I found some other friends from New York that were like me in, in a sense where it was just like yeah I feel like everyone like hears you're from New York and they think you need to act a certain way they think like you need to like hip hop. You need to like all this shit. You get me? Like, you gotta be walking around everywhere saying you're like you gotta fucking you know, or you're Dominican. You gotta say que lo que. Like you gotta speak Spanish. You gotta like. There's so much labels put on you, and I think when I went to college, I had the opportunity to meet other Latinos that were like me, that you know, were kids who were raised by villages and those villages just happened to be a a mixture of after school programs and you know uh, tv and videos and you know fucking just branching out and and listening things and pretty much yeah like those kids were just like me in the sense that like their parents like kept them away from the hood kept them away from doing all that dumb shit um so yeah, I don't even know how the fuck we got here. Uh. I remember I had a a, a, a professor or, or in community college who was from New York. And she said, you know, there's a saying that before you leave New York, New Yorkers have to take a common courtesy class yeah. before they leave. Yeah. Because they're perceived as assholes when they, wherever they go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I can see that in me in regards to like my lack of patience when teaching someone and mm-hmm. like, you know, teaching certain things. Um I definitely come from like a matter of fact standpoint that I don't like and I'm I'm still trying to I definitely want to fix that before our child comes here. I mean, I definitely want to be aware of it, but like you know, I don't want to make our child feel like shit. For like, you know, you pressed the wrong button. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um. <laughs> no, we call it. I was gonna say something. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Talk about that. <laughs> Did I press the right button? <laughs> like. Why you keep looking at the screen? You yeah, give me PTSD, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I'll say, like, you know, when I went to Korea to um, study abroad, I got to meet a lot of other Americans from different parts of the U.S. Yeah. and just seeing, like, how we navigated a little different, you mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah, there were some girls from New York. Um, there was one girl, she was hilarious. <laughs> she just, like, she was witty. And, we like, she could talk. Yeah, she was comedy, like. Honestly, I feel like low-key, it comes from all the radio that we used to listen to growing up. Like, me, I was always listening to just, like, the radio in the car with my dad or my mom traveling to, to school in the morning. And just listening to all this shit, like, all, like, back then, that's when, like, radio was, like, TV, and they used to have segments, and they used to have prank I mean, calls, and all that shit, and I'm sure they still do that to no I mean, no out avail. here, <laughs> like, for real, like, out here, we had radio, too, like, I mean, radio was a thing, I would say, bef- like, middle school is I when... I imagine, because you guys are all in cars out here. Yeah, yeah, so basically, like, yeah, our lives are in cars, so, you know, we would have our stations and, like, especially the first thing in the morning, you got people calling in, <laughs> talking about drama and just, like, you know, or just wild shit. Yeah. And, like, you know, I'd get excited for hearing, like, you know, the the hot new jams and stuff like that. Or, yeah. you know, my parents are 
older, so definitely they had their channels where it had oldies and like you know like the like the smooth slow jams and like <laughs> you know it was, it was like a disco night every time, every night but um uh, especially la radio i would say at night they would play a lot of like the you know r&b soul it wouldn't be just old songs but maybe newer songs that like fit that feeling too and r&b and stuff like that so um, but like, you know, some like low key jams too, mm-hmm. and you can just like groove to at night. So I remember a lot of that because, you know, we had family in, in L.A., and so we would drive to L.A. for family gatherings, and then on the way home, you know, that's what we listen to is radio. Yeah. So, you know, I got to be around a lot of music, especially from my dad. Yeah. Um, and that's how I know a lot of, like, old, old songs. Yeah. And, um, even my mom, like, she loved the music her parents would listen to. Mm -hmm. So my mom isn't a huge music nerd, but, like, she has, like, more, she listens to songs because they're sentimental, because they have a memory attached to it, Mm -hmm. or because it makes her dance. (laughs) So, um... You know, my mom would always say, like, oh, I can't sing, oh, I can't sing. But, like, if you could get her dance, <laughs> dancing, that's how I know she really enjoyed the song. Um, but, yeah. Um, I remember in middle school, <laughs> like, um, you know, sometimes you could, Put like. Put your mic down. Like, it's covering your mouth a little bit. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Can't see your lips. <laughs> You're getting down. Yeah. Tell me. Um, did your radios have like, you know, you, well, I'm sure, but you could like win things if you call in, right? Oh, yeah. They, like the tickets <laughs> and the concert tickets and yeah. stuff like, yeah, they had all of that. I mean, like we've had, I remember we had someone from our school in middle school. I forgot what he won. I think tickets to a concert that was going to happen, mm-hmm. but, um, he like, he called in everything and you could hear him on the radio and I just remember being at school. And everybody's like, "Yeah, I heard you." He's like, "Yep, that was me. Yep, that was like he was like on the sky nine because he was just like, yeah, I'm that's that guy." Funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's that's dope. Like, I I don't think we ever called in, but I remember like in New York, like the big thing with the radios was about like having DJs come on like every Friday night to like Hot ninety seven and mm. uh, when I think it was one hundred five point one. Um, but, uh, yeah, they would fucking just do these crazy mixes, like, every Friday night. And, like, it would be, like, commercial-free music, but they're actually reading you commercials as fucking assholes. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> basically, um, like, in the city, they would record these sets and sell them on as CDs. So, like, a big part of my life was just, like, buying the hot 97 cds and like burning those into my ipod and or my zune i love my zune um and all the little mp3 players i would have but uh yeah so these songs okay so for the radio most of the times you're listening to it was it like at home i mean i know you it said it was always in the car we never always in the, to car? the radio in okay. the home yeah Okay. Maybe so, if anything, it was like my mom. Now nah, we watched news in the morning, like whether it was Channel One or Channel Twelve. Like I went through a whole bunch of different. Things. I definitely watched Channel Five for like a lot, but uh, yeah. Okay. My bad. I no one knows what the fuck these channels are. Channel One was like a thing. I think Channel Five was like Fox. Channel Twelve was like the Bronxes or like whatever borough you were in. That borough's news. I w- I feel like after Channel Eleven was like local tv stations for like even out here um a lot of spanish channels i will say (laughs) yeah um always selling cars or (laughs) but um you know that's interesting i don't know if we had cds at least i'm not aware that you could you know get that's from the radio yeah no they had the hot 97 mixtapes that's fucking everywhere, bro. Everybody was selling them, and they would create their own little album artwork for it. Like, I it just was, remember so going good. on, um, what do you call it, um, LimeWire, 
and just like just remembering like the hook or the beat and just like searching searching or even asking like my wow. brothers or something it's a lot of work or like <laughs> once i finally got like my first phone is when i would you know re- i realized that you can like record on the phone like not like the whole thing but like i would just put it up to the speaker the car hit record yeah and then go in to go online and try to like narrow down like and once i found the song i get so excited or like i re- <laughs> shazam Jeez, that's a lot of work that's I'm, mad work. Yo, i would spend hours hours on the computer downloading songs making cds i was were you stickler about getting your album artwork um getting my album artwork yeah like how like if you had an ipod like and you downloaded a song without the album artwork would you find that correct album artwork for it oh no so that like because you know how like when apple came out they had like the whole like well uh, i didn't get an i i didn't get an well, ipod I mean, even till most, high school. most mp3 players displayed some i didn't even of have visual. an mp3 player oh, i had cds crazy. i was burning cds i had a walkman I until i had an ipod okay you leveled up <laughs> an ipod nano or was it like a full ipod um it was the skinny tall one the shuffle the one without a screen no the one with the screen oh so the nano. that was my very first ipod was it color screen or was it like it was a purple the, it was a purple was it colored screen or yeah it was colored okay yeah then the nano yeah the first nano that was my first like iPod. a chrome silver back or was it all metal chrome chrome silver yeah you have they had a purple nano at that point Wasn't with a silver pur- back like, where is this like metal in the back well, uh, it's it's like a like stainless wait, wait, steel. Wait, wait, wait. What the back. came out first, the square one or the tall, skinny rectangle one? The regular iPod, the square one came out first. Okay, that was my wheel. first one. And the silver back, like the chrome, not chrome, but I guess it was like stainless steel silver back that would get you scratched easily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my so first one. That was a one. thick, a thick iPod, and then they came out with the first Nano, which was like built like that, mm-hmm. except it was like. It still had the silver back and like a one a white or black front, I think, like that. Okay, I just remember it was purple, and it had a screen. Yeah, if it was purple, then then it was an. That older, was my second it was, iPod. It was like a yeah. yeah. Then that was like the the second or like there when they went all like uh, aluminum. And you can put music videos on there. And it did, and it had a wide screen then, right? Like the screen was pretty big. Was it wide? I don't think they created ever a. Uh, uh, a little nano like multicolored one without bigger screens it was like the t- it was like this tall and then but like this wide yeah no i, I think and yeah. i could like yeah i think i see it in my head it has like a like an oval shape to the body of it it wasn't like a full like flat slab yeah candy there bar. was a curve to it yeah and when you hold it you could just be feel like you're holding it yeah no, yeah, that was, that was that was dope. I think that was around the time of like the the I, iPhone 3GS and things like that. Like, yeah, no, the, the I had a Galaxy iPhone. up until 2020. Yeesh. Until I met this guy right yeah, here. I wasn't fucking with those green bubbles. Hey, you. I guess you were. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I was downloading. Um, I was making CDs. Um, honestly, I enjoyed the shit out of it. <laughs> and like because it was me for me it was like discovering music yeah like it was so exciting um and i was the one who made um cds for my dad my mom my brothers like i made all my brothers their cds like they would just like <laughs> joshua would literally write out what songs he wants give it on a, give it to me on a piece of paper and then he'd be out the door that's funny. <laughs> yeah, you Were you charging for it at least? No, it oh, wasn't. You gotta have that entrepreneurial mindset. You should have been fucking. <laughs> yeah, I was so lazy it's with naming the CDs cakes too. Or something, my G, like a, a fucking joyride to fucking. <laughs> I don't know. Jolly Bee didn't exist back then, right? What Jolly Bee? Did it? How, how I mean, old it is probably, Jolly Bee? Probably. Hmm. But I mean, it, I don't know when it first came out to the u.s but it's originally in the philippines so i don't know Hmm. but um yeah limewire that was my shit and then once limewire got shot down 
or shut down. <laughs> it was a bunch of different websites like Pirates Bay. I forget what else was yeah, there. Yeah, but Napster. I just started. But then YouTube allowed you started to popping so. off. And yeah, and so I started just downloading it straight from YouTube. Because then what I fell in love with was through this, like, finding all this music was um, music videos. Yeah. Like, I was in middle school, and, like, I wanted to be a music video director for a bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, I love that Music videos had their time. I feel like they're they're not quite the same as they They're They're for fans. Be. Yeah. Like, they know it's not like, you know, there's no more 106 in Park, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, even MTV shut down all their, like, countdowns and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, when they're making music videos... It's more for their fans. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, I feel like I don't even get recommended. I mean, maybe because I just don't watch them that often. But, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I feel like their music videos had a time where, like, I remember when you first got, I got my first PSP, mm-hmm. my PlayStation Portable, and it came with music videos on there. And it had Sierra and fucking, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Fuck. goodies or one, two step or both? Good. Uh, Might have been. Goodies. Yeah, it was that one. With that, what's his name? It's not. Why am I? P.D. Pablo? P.D. Pablo. Yeah. Yes. There you fucking go. Yeah. Oh, I used to fucking play that shit nonstop on my PlayStation Portable. Like, oh, this shit is so dope. I can watch Yo, everything on Sierra's here. Sierra's Goodies album was the last time I played with Barbies. Wow. I like, that was when I was growing out of it. I guess once I was getting obsessed with music is when I started playing less with my my dolls and my toys. Yeah. You know? Like, I remember, like... <laughs> um, oh, wait, they gyrate out huh? here. <laughs> literally, like, you know... Fuck I re- <laughs> these dolls. They just stay still. <laughs> it was, I think, sixth grade. And, like, um, my best friend, Larissa, shout out Larissa, <laughs> you know, she we would play dolls together. Um, but the Sierra Goodies album came out and I remember I had like, I got the CD and, um, um, you know how CDs have the inside pamphlet Mm -hmm. and you can go to like, well, there's like a poster if you extend it it all out. It depends which CD you got. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I love the ones that like turn into a poster, Mm -hmm. but then also on the, like when it's folded up. It, the pages had like um, the the songs and like the lyrics mm-hmm. to the songs. On the other side of it, yeah. Yeah, so I would like, you know, literally be listening to the songs and then, <laughs> you know, I definitely like, yeah, I, when those songs are on, I know it by word by word. Mm-hmm. And like when we were playing dolls, I would have the dolls like basically performing their own concert, <laughs> pretending they're Sierra. Um, cause I had all the brown dolls. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have any white Barbies <laughs> or white in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I would just have them performing and stuff. And, um, that's my last memory of playing with Barbies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever played with Barbies. I think the closest thing I had to a Barbie was like a, a Max Steel doll. <laughs> it was like probably built off of like the Ken body. But uh yeah. Yeah. It was like a cartoon around that I believe. Like Max I Steel. I didn't really have the male dolls. I think I had one or two. But I wasn't really interested. I don't know. That's funny. Um But yeah, um, I don't know how we got all the way to dolls and, like, music. I think we were just but, talking um, about... We just talking. I was growing up. Growing and up. you said, this yeah. ain't planned. There's no agenda. Yeah. Well... I'm just going through the fields, you know? You know? You gave your little, this wasn't planned. Yeah, I get, I mean, in terms of, you know... You know? Um, I would say for me, if you want to go back to that, like, you know... For me, like, I guess I planned but didn't plan a lot of things in my life. I kind of let life happen to me. I know, I knew, I knew I didn't want to be, like, 
quote unquote like failure or something like that. Like, you know, people would tell me like my family would tell me like, oh yeah, you're smart, go to college, like you're going to be like the one that like breaks the cycle in the family or you're going to be the one that goes to college and gets a big career, you know, I was the quiet one, the good, good one, whatever that's, yeah. that means. Um, but, um, I didn't have a lot of motivation Yeah. to, I didn't, I didn't know what I was capable of. I didn't know. And I just knew a lot of things out there wasn't appealing to me. Like, do I want to be a doctor? Do I want to be a lawyer? Like, no. the only thing that appealed to me was in senior year of high school, we had an intro to business class. Mm -hmm. And we were told to create a product, create a business plan for the product. Um, you have to present that to the class. And also, you have to create a commercial to market your product. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know that that was like my first time really getting super motivated mm -hmm. and um, I kind of hijacked the project because I wanted to take it seriously yeah. and I felt like I I don't know according to my memory like the people who are on the project with me were just like eh, just another project yeah. you know that's a lot of projects with group projects can be sometimes where it's just like you know um, some people care more than the others mm -hmm. um, but I was like excited about it I would say, um, it was for, um, it was like, I can't even remember the product exactly. It was like a kind of like a natural essential oil spray that like, not only will you smell good, but you'll feel good after mm. you spray yourself. So you start your day with this spray. That was the product. Um, and like you know made a full-on business plan i was the one who presented the plan i hate speaking in front of people but for some reason i was like you know ready <laughs> to present the project uh, the product and then also we had to make a commercial and my like you know my middle school self who wanted to direct her own music video was so excited to bring a camera out and to like storyboard and to plan something and like I got my friends um to like be in it and um you know they're actually excited too because they love performing and being you know yeah my friends they you know were into like k-pop I mean I was too but we're super hard in <laughs> into k-pop and um if it meant that they could dance or something in front of the camera they were down <laughs> So I got them to, you know, shoot a commercial and um, we call it and uh, we, you know, I, I used, what did I use? What was the program? Movie Maker. I Windows used Mo movie maker. Windows Movie Maker. Oh, fuck. That's like cool. Like, <laughs> to cool. edit it. That works. That does, it does. I think I've used it before, too. I mean, yeah. not gonna lie, I was using... I think around that time you're talking about was around the time I had like my first computer and I was probably, it was probably an older version of like, that older version by my saying, like I was watching MKVHD at that time when he was Dang. an infant and he was like teaching me how to use my fucking laptop at the time. Yeah. Um, I was watching Tim Chantarongsu who at that time was Timothy Delegato and he was always doing skits. And always, like, making his own music videos and, like, do making skits with his friends and just being weird and silly and just, you know, yeah. um, not just him, but a bunch of other, like, there was a lot of Asian YouTubers. Like, they were killing the game during a certain period in YouTube yeah. during those the, times. It wasn't, that wasn't Vine period, right? Like, that was. No, it was prior to Vine. Prior, okay, cool. Yeah, because yeah. I started getting into YouTube 20... Not even 20. I can't even say 20. Uh, 2006, 2007. Yeah. To be honest, I can't put a finger on, like, when I started to get into YouTube. I feel like YouTube got into me. Like, it's just been a part. And, like, I don't, I don't, I think it, it was. It was from I always people used showing it as a tool. me stuff. I, I use it as a tool to just watch things. Yeah. But, like, more so I remember, like, other websites, like E-Bombs World and, and Mini Clips and things like that. Maybe for Mini games. Clips. But no. Not E-Bombs World? 
No, Yvonne's world was kind of um, like world star hip hop a little bit. It yeah. was just like a lot of like random fucking like bum fights and <laughs> shit oh, like my that. Gosh. Let's get into this. I need to pause real quick. Yeah. Okay, what's E Bomb's world? E for E Bomb's world? Wait, what? Did, what was it? It was called E Bomb's world. Yeah, it's basically. I think I told you. Um, it was like a bums fight central. No, not Bum <laughs> Fight Central. It was like the Horrible. old equivalent of like World Star Hip Hop. Um, okay. It was okay. just where like raunchy, funny videos went, and it was just like what didn't get approved on YouTube would go there. <laughs> I feel like Sadie needs to get down, and she might just fuck up this camera. <laughs> She's trying to plot it too. Hey, that was smooth as fuck, girl. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that, that's what that was. E bombs world, and the mini clips uh, was basically just a, a game site where you can just play games on the web. Yeah. Um, you don't have to download anything; just everything played on the browser. I loved YouTube. Yeah. I just I loved watching skits. Um, the shit would make me laugh. I remember uh, it was it was like Timothy Delaghetto. Uh, was Toronto, so you mean, but I'm back, well, that's know, what he was con- called back then. Um, Wasabi Productions. Like, I know they're still going, and they're not even called Wasabi Productions anymore. Yeah. But Alex and Roy, like, their beginning days. Um, <laughs> dumbass shit. Um, <laughs> but, like, to this day, some of their songs still, like, just, like, stay in my head yeah. uh the shoes guy shoes guy let's get some shoes let's get some shoes oh my god shoes maybe i've seen shoes that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy was like a blonde wig and then he's just like it's him going to a shoe store it sounds familiar i hear <laughs> i hear like the, the audio in my head where did you ever like uh do um like uvu and like uh chat roulette and things like that as a as a high schooler i mean uvu a little bit yeah okay cool. yeah we used to do that i remember doing that and that's uh, when like is that the one where you you video chat friends right yeah that's yeah it. so it was just with friends yep because i only did it with chat friends. roulette was the random people one yeah i couldn't do the randos <laughs> i think i like me and friends did like like just the chat yeah um with randoms and it was too it was too weird and it was it's it lasted one it's one night <laughs> it was just one night i was just like okay this is weird <laughs> i didn't get any dicks but <laughs> you didn't see it? oh we no. saw all the dicks and it's basically just, no. our friends we would just keep skipping and like it would just be like four or five of us in front of the camera just like fucking with people <laughs> wow wow no yeah no um but yeah, um, I used Movie Maker to put together the whole commercial, and um, I actually got a, a, a well, my group and I got first place for best commercial and best first place. <laughs> best business plan, and like. Um, hey, I mean, it, it it it's I'm seeing a pattern here. I remember, we did that uh that one game. Uh, at a, at Alex's place, uh, one of the Jackbox games where you have to like oh, build a product yeah. and pitch it in front of people. You love that one, yeah. Right, you got to be getting up on stage in creative mornings. Why am I up there? Plus, you got a baby and you're really you're more you're more likable. <laughs> <laughs> more likable. I got a man made baby. <laughs> and you know, yours is man made too. But <laughs> on a serious note, like. Part of the reason why, I don't know, I think there's a small part of me that now that I'm pregnant, I'm fearful that I'll drive away business. I don't, I, don't, I think it's the exact opposite. Um, I feel like it makes you more personable and makes people understand, that like, yeah, we're, we're out here trying to support our family with this. Yeah, but there's a part of me that's just like, well, can I work with them long term? Like, are they going to be busy? Am like I not going to be priority? Jobs, like, yeah, you, you know. Me? And I get you. I, I, I see what you mean there. Because um, we've had, you know, we've had 
I feel like a client or two ask like, oh, so, you know, what about when the baby comes? What are you guys going to... Yeah, I mean, and at that point, you know, we, we look at at different ways of like getting other people to help us and, you know, yeah. hiring help. And it just, it really means that we may have to either, you know, take in less money for ourselves or, you know, up our rates to, to compensate for that. Um, you know, that's why we're trying to make the moves now to kind of like, you know, get clients to pay us up front and provide them more value. You get me? Like not just pay us up front, those pay us up front, but like, provide more value and pay up front so that we have a better view of our finances so that it can afford us to then, you know, put we're, these things we're in We're trying action. to think smarter with our business by having more of a commitment from our clients. Yeah. Um, and what we do takes commitment. Like yeah, if, if it you're does. trying to be successful at this, like, it needs to be consistent and we need to be leading the charge and by, by doing exactly what we're doing here and being consistent about what we choose to do which is like you know i know we say this wasn't planned comes on whenever it wants but maybe we do put this on the calendar you know me i'm down um i am same thing with you know how to copy and still i definitely want to interview her in different <laughs> interviews she's over here <laughs> so laying her chin sadie down. is I, like stressed because she wants to lay down but like the camera's tripods are in the way <laughs> she literally just has her chin on the couch Cause she's sad, cause she can't get up there. But you can, go girl. Up, up, go up, 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 up. Go ahead, Sadie. Oh, Good girl, it's you be did always it, Mama. A Sadie segment to every video, I swear. Where we go up, up. We have to create a graphic for that. Up, up. <laughs> <sighs> um. But yeah, I mean, my point of telling that story was just like. That's what got me to be like, okay, maybe I major in business. Yeah. You know, maybe this is, I have something here. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't afford a four-year college. Um, I know there's scholarships out there and all that, but I really wasn't motivated to look for them because everybody was just like, well, you're so mixed. Like, you can apply to all of them. In and, the system. <sighs> now, I get it. It's, it's a full-time job and, like, Honestly, low key, like shout out to my mom. Like, mm-hmm. she got laid off in the best time possible, and like, she while I was busting my ass in school and like doing my best and like just being a social butterfly and trying to like grow and learn and figure out what I wanted to do, she took that upon herself and she made that her job. Mm-hmm. Her job was like, hey, if I don't have a job, I'm gonna game the system. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm not game the system, but it sounds it sounds bad when you say that. I mean, when everyone's fucking gaming the system to taxes yeah. to all like, so yes, we we game the system, and yeah, like I I I went to a school that gave me the most financial aid, that I had mm-hmm. the most scholarships, and just like that's how I chose my college. I didn't choose it based. I mean, we went to go visit them and definitely like checked out the campus for like two of them. Um, but uh, I ended up just settling with the one that just was like, hey, like we're going to give you the most bang for your buck. Yeah. And it's not that far. And we also yeah. have a graphic design program. So. Yeah. Uh, so. I didn't even know what graphic. I didn't know what a design career was until yeah. I met you. Yeah. You know. I was going to. Um, my bad. Go for it. My bad. No, I was just going to say, like, um, I wasn't aware what my options were. Yeah. Um, I feel like as most people of color, you're not aware of what your options are. You get me? Like, yeah. The same things that like, so I, I, like I told you I was raised by like after school programs and things like that where I was able to, you know, I feel like a lot of it happened when I got out of that Catholic school and mm-hmm. went to my public zone school, high school, where I like got all these opportunities and, you know, I got a chance to, to try it all. I did youth mock trials. Being a lawyer was not for me. Uh, I did the rap program when I thought I wanted to be a psychologist. Like, psych, uh, what is it? Psychology or psych? What's like? Uh, psychiatrist. I forget. There's two of them: ology and iatry, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I learned quickly that you know I couldn't burden other people. I'm too much of a. I feel too much of what people are going through. Yeah. I guess you can call it an empath for me to to be in a position like that like it would just 
take a lot out of me. And then I got to try the design program and at Hostos Community College. Shout out to Hostos. And I remember like just taking on small projects and like what's funny is like I also at that time I had um like a little Sony camcorder. Mm. A little orange Sony camcorder that shot like H D. And I remember just like recording that and like recording videos of my little cousins when I would go visit my dad. Seven twenty like, H D? Yeah, it was 720 <laughs> yeah. HDs. It was that uh, I, w- I would do uh, music videos for the the B boys in my school. Um, <laughs> this was around like the fucking uh, not the you got served, but the fucking what's the stomp the yard, stomp the yard, and what's the one? What is the one? Step, Step up. up. That's the one. Cause that one, no. Step up too. Yeah, but that where's Step Up based? I think it's. It might be. It's well, not New York. It's not New York, but yeah. it, it was just that. That was dance in school was big. Yeah. Like in my high school, like we were, it was around art. So like you know, we had dance teams, and they were they weren't like the biggest dance teams, but like I used to do videos, and like I remember like one time specifically, like I would get down with the camcorder and i was like trying to move with the movement of them <laughs> and one guy was like hey, let's not do that let's just stay still <laughs> i was like well fuck me right you can't see what we're fucking doing bro <laughs> um but yeah i used to i used to do that and i used to i think one of the first projects i did was i made our senior sweatshirt uh, the mma sweatshirt i fucking lost that thing bro i think i have the shirt somewhere around here mm-hmm. like, san diego yeah, in 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 one of my yeah, bins. I have like yeah. the shirt, I believe. Because you kept your sentimental stuff and you threw out your like yeah. other stuff. But like, I had a sweater that had my last name on it, mm-hmm. Fernandez, and I don't know where the fuck that shit is. I think I think I know someone <laughs> may fucking have it, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I lost it around a uh, college time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember just working on that graphic was so dope because I wanted everyone, like all the cliques in my school to feel like they were involved in it. Yeah. And I gave them their own little piece of like clip art around the thing. Like we had a B-boy, we had like <laughs> everyone art. was represented. I, I just did clip art. <laughs> um, I remember fucking uh, one project we had at Hostos was like we made a a movie like a movie poster for any movie you wanted to see and like made like this armageddon movie and like i I did like ryan reynolds and like i put like tree branches on his face and like faded them back to make it look like there was like veins coming out of him and made his eyes like pitch black (laughs) like (laughs) oh man i gotta i gotta find that you um we talked about this i think but you didn't have like a video production like class in schools right? not in high school in a in like a like if you got a chance to like do ap courses mm-hmm. or like college courses and things like that really then, yeah you could choose so that's how i yeah. took that graphic design program yeah video production as an elective in middle school and mm-hmm. that was my favorite elective even more so than art i thought i would enjoy art so much but the teacher was very like you know you like the art of art and like how you properly do like certain types of art and it yeah. was just... I, I gotta say i enjoyed my art classes in college like mm-hmm. that's the one thing that i loved about um college like f- our like for graphic design per se our professor made sure like in like when you first do the program mm-hmm. your first year you don't touch a computer you're 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 doing the basics of art you're yeah. doing, you know, drawing 101, painting 101. And then I think it's like your first semester, you don't have design. Your second semester is when you get your first design program class. And it's mainly just learning the tools. Uh, we had the car watch and bottle project where you literally scan in a, uh, you scan in a magazine of a photo ad, like uh, whether it be a uh, car watch or bottle and, and basically you zoom all the way to like the ink splotch level mm-hmm. and then we would just click a shape around that and fill the color with that ink splotch and then back up and then keep doing it 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 until when you back all the way up you've reproduced the image and i remember we all thought it was just like such a fucking strenuous task it was just like why is this asshole making us do this mm-hmm. but really what he was teaching us what to do 
was how to use the tools like second nature. Yeah. He was like, it was like the, and like, I remember we even went to like our drawing class, like a professor said like, like learning to draw is essentially learning to see. You get me? It's like, how well do you see? Um, like we would do like uh, lessons where like we would just like cover our paper and our hands and just like look at an object and just draw. And when you like lift it up, like it'd be cool because like you would see spots where like you were spot on. And like, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm drawing like a cup, I'm drawing like the top of the cup, but like the base of the cup is like down here. And like the water in the cup is like over here. And everything you can tell, like when you were lined up, you were seeing exactly correctly and you were drawing these shapes. Um, and then you can see where things just went off. And like, it's, it's really cool to like see the the abstractness to, you know, what comes out of things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed um, the opportunities and schooling that I had. Um, yeah, I would say, um, you know, the middle school I went to, we were the very first, like, sixth grade class. Like, mm-hmm. So it was a brand new school. So they had a lot of new, like, amenities and stuff like that. So, like, video production, though, was definitely what stood out to me in middle school. Mm-hmm. Um, in high school, I took a ceramics class. Fucking hated that class, bro. Mm, I still like, want to try that. Like, it was definitely a challenge, and I enjoyed. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed trying to tackle it on, and but I just wasn't really. I guess I wasn't great at it. Maybe I was good, yeah. but not great. And like, I don't know, but. Um, I was just very, like, I wanted to be good. Yeah. But my mom was just like, you know, you would come home from school and you would look so stressed out. And it wasn't because of math. It wasn't because of history or none of that. It was because of your ceramics class. That was the most stressed <laughs> I see I had, I had ever seen you over a class. That's funny. Um um, I mean, to be honest, my most stressful class, though, was AP Accelerated Calculus BC. Can I ask, when it comes to, like, classes you struggled in, was it ever, like, a theme with the subject? Or was it, like, a, like for me, it was the teacher. Like, if, if, it, if I didn't vibe with the teacher, I wasn't learning in that class. And I wasn't, like, that was going to be the class that I, like, um, took a hit on. I feel like for me, even if the teacher was an asshole or was boring, like, it definitely made it hard. But I guess I would just observe and find out, okay, what do they really want? Yeah. And then make sure I do those things. Mm -hmm. Because I hated being in trouble. I hated, like, doing something wrong. So I guess, like, even those teachers, I was motivated to not disappoint them. It sounds. No, fuck that. It sounds. Those teachers uh, would get the 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 shit end of the stick from me. <laughs> um, that just sounds like my uh, trauma responses is dealing with, <laughs> like you know, not to step on any toes, not to like you know. Yeah. Um, but um, for me, it was more of just I would say it was subject based. Um, science class was always the class where I struggled so hard to stay awake in science classes. And, um, I remember when I got to the point where I finished all my necessary science classes and, um, they're like, oh, you can choose what class you do, what type of science you do for your senior year or was my junior year? I mm-hmm. forgot what, what it was. Maybe it was my junior year. Because I wanted to make sure I didn't have to take science my senior year, I think is what it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I was just like, oh, environmental science. <laughs> that one sounds like it would hold my attention. I still struggled. <laughs> and it was hard because, like, a lot of it was just, like, you know, I hated, like, multiple choice. I mean, I, it was just hard because it was a lot of memorization. And... Like, multiple choice for me was easy when it was easy for me to remember. Mm -hmm. But when it was a class that couldn't hold my intention and you're expecting me to remember things, I, when it came to science, I was like, fuck. 
like I like you know and I would try to study I guess I would try to pay attention to class but only way I could stay awake in science classes was eating (laughs) to be damn honest and I would hide food I always was really good at hiding food I don't know. To me, I thought I was good at hiding food. Maybe teachers didn't call me out because I was doing okay in class. Yeah. But, like, I would, like, position my bag on the table and, like, <laughs> open the bag of Cheetos a certain way to make sure that it wasn't too loud. And, like, even my friends, too. We loved food. We would just, like, we, had, we would have a set, like, we had a system mm-hmm. on how to share food with all our friends in class. <laughs> um... But um, math was really easy for me. Math was, like, one of the few classes where I was motivated to, like, you know, I wanted to be number one yeah. in math classes. Except when it got to statistics, because it was way too many words. I hated the big paragraphs of just, like, you know, like, oh, like... Sally was running five hours, <laughs> and Martin was running three hours, but one had to run, f- like, you know, yeah. like, all that, and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> and, like, that's why I always felt like I maybe had ADHD or something. Yeah. I don't know, because I would have to reread the paragraph over and over and over, and I was always one of the last people still taking the statistics class, yeah. or st- statistics test. Yeah. Um. And it was so difficult that I didn't even take the AP class. Actually, my senior year, I don't think I took one AP class. Because to me, I was like, what was the point? Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I've done some self-work since. Still, I feel like there's still aspects of me. I still need to work on it. But like, a lot of the times I was like, what's the point? What's the point? Because, oh, because back to, like, college, like, I was just like, I can't afford to go to a four-year. So what's the point of getting, like, going, taking these AP classes that probably will fail and um, and not even be going to a four-year? But then I ended up taking, I think, some AP, I think I took AP U.S. History, like, the, the test. Um, I took, um, I think I took environmental science and I can't remember. I think I did try taking the calculus one, but yeah, I took the calculus one and oh my God, I remember everybody opened the booklet at the same time because mm-hmm. like, you know, they start the timer and then just like, you may now open your booklets. Yeah. And everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you could hear people just like, what is this? Or we got screwed over with the environmental science one because there was stuff in there on the first page that none of us learned. And we realized it was because we didn't have the latest books. Wow, that's fucked up. So our school, school screwed us over with that. That's fucked up. Yeah. Our school system's all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, um, my parents, um, neither of them went to college. Um, you know, they worked their asses off. Um, my dad did the, the slow climb in his job, you know, stayed there for years, you know, working on, like, in, like, I guess the factory side of it and Mm. then eventually moving up, you know, through corporate and, you know, he, he's told me it's, it's the only reason why he got to move up was because they had to have more diversity Yeah. and they saw my dad hardworking, not white and being like, he'll do, Yeah. you know, and because of that, he got to, you know, Start the climb at least. Yeah. Um, but when it came to college, like my dad actually got laid off, and you know my parents recently lost the home, uh, our home, um, because of the two thousand seven economic crash. You yeah. know, the housing bubble that pops. Like we lost our home, 
And, you know, my parents loved that home because it was a two-story, home, like, new-build home. We were the first owners of it. And my parents, to them, they're like, we made it. Yeah. We fucking made it, yeah. you know? Um, we hosted all the family parties. Like, that house would be packed. Yeah. Cops would come, like, you know, like, and, you know, when we lost that house, it was, it was hard. Yeah. It was hard on my parents. It was very hard on my dad's pride. Yeah. Um, and then to get laid off right after that, like, my dad was just, whew. Yeah. You know, and... You know, like, for me, I guess, like, that built even more of, like, what's the point? Yeah. You know, like, my parents worked so hard and still lost everything, you know, or, you know, I can't even afford to go to a four-year, like, I can go to community college, but, like, community college was kind of, like, the peop- the kids who don't go nowhere go to c- community college. Yeah. You know, and I remember I had my first... Not my first, but, like, my first one where I was clearly, like, this is a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, I thought I was going to die. I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't catch my breath. And, like, um, my mom was just like, calm down. You are fine. You're not dying. I was just like, I think you need to call 911. I can't breathe. And then, like, my mom had to, like, calm me down. Um, And it's just everything was compounding. Um just the pressure of like you know you know um feeling like i wasn't living up to what my family saw of me yeah um me not knowing what i wanted to do with my life but also me not wanting to be home anymore i wanted to live my own life and i was so used to allowing fear dictate my moves and dictate what i do in life i was like i just need to get out of here um and that's when um, I started looking at other community colleges because the one I was going to, MSJC, like, I could only get two, three classes a semester. Yeah. Like, it was so packed with kids going there. Yeah. And I was just like, at this rate, I'm going to be stuck here. I'm going to be working a job and then not be motivated to even get an AA. Yeah. So I um, had a friend, two friends, actually, I think. Yeah, two friends going to the community college in Oceanside, and they loved it, yeah. you know, and they were able to get classes and stuff. I was just like, okay, let me check that out. Yeah. Um, and I actually went with my mom, and we drove out there, and oh my God, I was just like, Oceanside's beautiful. Yeah. We went to the college, and it was called Miracosta. Yeah. Didn't realize so much later what Miracosta means. Basically, you can see the ocean from the school i was like oh wow very fitting (laughs) um and one of the things i noticed too it was how diverse it was Mm. like my school was not diverse at all yeah yeah like i saw you know there's definitely white people there but i saw asians i saw samoans pacific islanders i saw mexicans hispanics and um you know, um, and it wasn't even just one type of kid. Yeah. Like, I saw, like, what who you call, like, nerds or who you would see as just, like, you know, I saw adults there and stuff yeah. like that. Well, that's and, cool. That sounds like a, a magical place, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And I was just, like, um, I was a big gut person. Still am. Mm-hmm. Like my, By gut, you mean intuition? Yeah, my intuition was very strong that, like, I needed to go here. Yeah. I like this is the place. Like literally, like I was there, and I was. We went to the admissions office, and I was like, "How can I go here?" And they told me like, "Oh, how to get the, the tra- your transcripts, how to submit them over, and stuff like that." And within like a week or so, I was enrolled. Dope shit. Into that school. Um, that's a that's a point of initiative and in, like taking things and and doing them. Yeah, um, I think the panic attack really like made me just be like. Priscilla, you're not, you don't feel safe in, like, what you're in right now. Yeah. I think that's something I didn't really, like, look back on and, like, just show gratitude for. And the fact that, like, you know, my 
my uncle John was the first person to go to college in our family and he kind of paved the way for me like you know he invited me out to his school and I remember like when John went through his own transformation like when he almost got kicked out of his fancy high mm-hmm. school and yeah. like just for cursing and like he like fixed his whole act up he changed his whole New York or not even New York his just um, that's New York I guess <laughs> His whole gangsta attitude, it yeah. went out the window. Um, and he became a different person. Um, so, like, you know, it showed me that, like, that I could do it, too. And, obviously, I mean, I went to try to get the same scholarship. I told you about the story. Yeah. Like, that shit broke my heart when they didn't give me the scholarship because, like, I knew I was smart enough to be there. I knew, like, you know, I, I, was, I was one of those kids, but, like, they just simply dropped me because someone in my family had gotten it already. So I understood. You know what I mean? It was full it was a full ride to like Ivy League equivalent schools. Yeah. You get me? Um and it Yeah. And the funny thing looking back on it was full ride at that tuition's locked rate. So if tuition went up, like You gotta pay that. You gotta pay that. So he did yeah. have to like pay a little but it was nowhere near the amount that, like, it could have been. It could have been. It, we would have, well, you know, thankfully he's a doctor now, so it don't matter. It was but. like the six figure um, price, right? Yeah, it was one of those schools. I think my school was around, around like the 40 or 50 uh, rate. And, like, we knocked it down with, like, tuition and everything. With, not, not tuition, with, with the uh, school that you ended up going to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we wind up knocking it down to anywhere like two or three a semester or something like that. Uh, yeah. By two or three, I mean like two or three thousand dollars a semester. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing UCs out here. I think I, I, um, I may be wrong, but I feel like they were saying like forty to sixty thousand a semester. Yeah. Um, but when I went to state, it was like. What fourteen to eighteen thousand? Shit. That's um, nice. And I was like, I hope I have this right, but I was just like, okay, like, I I'm going to state. Like I didn't even look at yeah. you know, cause so my plan was, once going to community college was to transfer over to a four year. Mm-hmm. Um. And um. Because I transferred from another community college, community college took me like a total of three years. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I transferred to a four year. But then I was at the four year for three years because like I changed my major, I think, once or twice. Um, But um, community college honestly was the best of my college years. Mm, but the best overall was, I would say, studying abroad. Mm. That, I would say, community college was a big step for me to grow as a person. Um, I fell in love for the first time. I felt like I had a group of friends. Um, I built, you know, relationships with, you know, um, females, males, and just, like, you know, felt the independence of, like, you know, um, going out to eat, uh, going to a bar, or, um, you know. Um, and that was the one in Oceanside, right? Yeah, in Oceanside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had my heart broken. I went through conflict. Was that, you didn't dorm though there, right? No. Yeah, so you still would travel. That's, that's a big ass travel from where you at to there. Well, so did you have days where you like stood over people's houses quite often and things like that? No, 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 I wasn't, I home. wasn't allowed to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> see, that's something that I loved about college. It felt like it was, it was like, you know, living on your own, but like with training wheels on. You know what I mean? Where, like, you knew yeah. that, like, like I, I got to see that I could live by myself and, like, do my thing when I was in college. I loved dorming, and I would always, like, recommend for, if you have the opportunity and, like, it's a part of your like, your personality and you're able to do it, you know, yeah. like, 
go do it because I've, I've, I've had certain friends and family members that like it just wasn't for them and they came back home and they went to a community college or a CUNY what we call uh, community colleges in New York which is city university in New York things like that there was a part of me especially after studying abroad because that was my first time dorming was yeah. there in Korea and part of me was like fuck this is what I missed out on this is what I didn't get to develop, like, you know, yes, in community college, like, I did start to learn people skill and personal skills, um, and then when I was in Korea, like, you are living with people, yeah. you are, like, seeing, like, a lot of the same people every day, yeah. um, and it's, like, a whole other level, I would say, of people skills, yeah. um, but honestly, like, I, I did have some regret, but, like, I think it was meant to be for me as a person, being that, like, I was very uh, much a loner. I was very much in my head, letting fear guide me, um, being a very shy person. Um, so I felt like maybe I needed to take those yeah. baby steps because uh, maybe I would have been one of those people who are like, I can't do this and come home and just yeah. quit. You know, um, but no, like I went to community college near home, hated it there. When and at that time, I wasn't even driving myself to school. I did eventually drive myself to that school, but I was so terrified of driving that my grandparents drove me to my community college. I was a terrified girl. Yeah. And um, once I finally was just like, I need to get out. I need to do something with my life. And Oceanside, Miracosa came, I came across that. I was just like, oh, hey, this means I'm going to be commuting. Yeah. This means I'm going to be driving. Uh, it was like an average of 40, 45 minutes to school. That's a lot, that's, that's a lot of distance for, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but at the same time, it, pro that provided me a lot of independence that I needed mm -hmm. being in the car, making decisions, driving, um, you know, I was an asshole on the road. Mm -hmm. I would be tailgating people, going in between people, like driving fast. And I thought I was slick. I thought mm -hmm. I was cool, but now I'm just like, that fucking asshole mm. driving like that? Like, that was me. Yeah. Um, because I was always running late. I mean, that's, I'm still like kind of like that. But um, the running late part. <laughs> um, but um, going to, you know, driving like, you know, like I would be driving to meet up a friend or like going to class and being like oh yeah let's go here oh yeah let's go there like yeah. i needed that so much yeah. um and or even when i first started dating the fact that like you know car dates i never had that before car dates and that's like some west coast shit <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's some west coast shit that's some west coast shit mm -hmm. yeah like we what? Didn't have cars we just had trains we just <laughs> Nah, Take doing someone. the parking to see the sunset, all of that stuff. That sounds nice. Yeah, Home, yeah. I want my child to. Uh, I want my child to to grow up with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and good memories. Um, some scary memories too. My first time falling asleep on the wheel. Yeah. You're wilding, bro. Yeah, I mean, like I was trying to be out and having fun and be doing what I'm doing, or even. Also, still going to school, like, I was exhausted. And yeah. then driving home late at night, and, like, I, I would car carpool with my friend Bonnie, too. So I remember I dropped her off at her home, or I think her mom's shop, because her mom uh, worked at Nails, did Nails. And I was like, hey, dropped her off. And, like, you know, Bonnie would, like, keep me awake. Mm -hmm. But after I dropped her off, I was now trying to go home. And all I, I just remember feeling dirt and, like, the wheel kind of jerking on me. And I, like, 
bolted my eyes open and I was off the freeway and I had I was in the fast lane too so I was on the left side going into the dirt and then I had I like pulled the wheel back over into the fast lane and my heart was going I was wide awake after that yeah I, bet. I was, was like fuck I almost died yeah you know um so through commuting because after I went to San Diego I transferred to San Diego State <laughs> that was a commute. Yeah. There was a time where it took me four hours to get home because they shut down the freeway <laughs> because of a, ac- a major accident. It took me four hours. I was like, I could be in Vegas right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just learned like, there's no point of being an asshole on the road. You see some crazy shit. You see other people being assholes and realize, you know what? I don't got to be that person. Mm-hmm. And also just also learning to what is my, what's best, what's the best use of my energy? Yeah. You know, being in the fast lane, always trying to make sure you're the fastest one just to get maybe five minutes home faster. Mm -hmm. Or going with the traffic and avoiding assholes or just like sticking to your lane and just going with the flow and just jamming out to music way much better of a time yeah that's why cars need to drive themselves <laughs> humans suck and they get distracted and they rubberneck rubbernecking is i fucking hate rubbernecking bro this is, all right just keep going like i get it like everyone some wants fucked to up see. shit happened everyone on the side of the road see, but like bro. at the same time like you're gonna cause another accident by all of a sudden dropping your your speed just because you're looking and not even in front of you either. Yeah. You know, I don't, yeah, it, it it pissed me off. But <laughs> um, I feel like I'm taking like a long about ro- way to get to like 2020. But um, you took forever <laughs> to get to 2020. I know. I'm just like, do we even have time for like that? An hour and 30 in right now. Damn. Yeah. Maybe an hour and 40. <sighs> Should we this be a to be to be continued? Yeah, let's let's do it as a to be continued so we can take advantage of these free clip making tools because they ain't gonna do nothing more than <laughs> one hour. We may have to, uh, we may have to use a uh, create a fake email to make some clips from this one. Yeah, let me use my emails. I have two. Yeah. So um. One of those. But yeah, so I would just say that you know. Um, A lot of things for me I didn't exactly plan out or I thought I could plan out, but then also just let life happen. And, you know, we'll get into it in the next episode, but I feel like I finally got to a place in 2020 where I was just like, what do I actually want? Mm-hmm. And I'm still chipping away at that, but, like, I can't just let life happen to me anymore. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, it's going to happen to me no matter what. But I can't act like it's out of my control. Like, everything's out of com- my control. Like, yeah. okay, shit is going to happen. It has happened. What are you now going to do? Yeah. So, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> that was another episode of. This wasn't planned. Mm-hmm. My name is Chris. Oh, my name's Priscilla. And this was produced by Live Studio. Oh, shit. Did I not do that in the beginning? I don't think we did. Nope. We didn't. No? Oh, no. yeah. If you're interested in starting a show like this for yourself, yeah. uh, with the camera switches and everything, um, reach out to us at bookalivestudio.com. The website was just up. Um yeah we specialize in going live we specialize in video podcasts Mm -hmm. we specialize in set design if you want to show them the wide angle um yeah this is this is our bread and butter um so if you want this work come get this work i don't know which camera i'm looking at come get this work (laughs) Uh, but yeah yeah that's it we'll see you in another video bye